Hi, I'm Scott Hanselman. Today I want to talk to you about ASP.NET and mobile. Mobile is huge. There are a billion mobile subscriptions. That's one for every seven people on the planet. People are hitting your website and they're doing it with a mobile device. In the U.S., that's about 25% of traffic. But in developing countries, like in this example, India and Egypt, half or even three quarters of the traffic that your website's going to get will come from mobile. So you can't ignore it. What should you do? Well, you could do nothing. Literally do nothing and hope that the mobile browsers get better. That might eventually work, but a more appropriate thing to do might be to change the client side to adapt. This means using responsive and adaptive design techniques, CSS3 and media queries, and I'll show you a brief demo of that. More extreme, you could target mobile directly. That means serving a different site different HTML, different CSS, specific to a mobile device, using a tool like maybe jQuery Mobile. I'll show you an example of that as well. What happens if you do nothing? In this example, I've taken my friend Phil Hack's blog and loaded it up in a mobile emulator. It looks OK, but you can tell that the images are small and the fonts are unreadable. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is zoom in on his content. What I should do, at the very minimum, is use a viewport tag. A viewport tag is a little line of HTML that indicates what the default or initial zoom of the site should be. We've all visited mobile sites before. The first thing we do is tap tap. We tap tap because we're going to zoom in on that content. Why not do that tap tap for the user? Here's Phil's site with that one line of HTML added. The viewport has been set, the right rail has been zoomed away from, and I can see the text. It's not a mobile site, but it's more mobile friendly and it only required a single line of HTML. It's just this awareness of techniques like this that can make the difference in your site being mobile friendly or being mobile hostile. Here's an example of a CSS3 media query. In this query we're saying if the maximum width of the screen is 1024, the maximum height is 768, use this block of CSS. This technique is used to create what are called breakpoints. A breakpoint could say this site should look like this on a large screen, and when it hits 1024, it should look like this, and when it gets smaller, it should look like this. And you can remove or add elements as you like. This is part of the CSS3 spec and supported by many mobile browsers like iPhones and Windows Phone. Here's an example. If I go into Visual Studio and make a MVC4 application, I've got a number of choices. Internet, intranet and mobile. I'm not going to pick mobile though. I'm going to click regular internet application and hit OK. This will be the default template that comes with ASP.NET. When I run this project, my desktop browser is going to come up. This is the default ASP.NET template. Notice that it's at about 1024 and it looks fine for a desktop site. As I start making the site smaller and I'm resizing the browser, Notice that the text and elements on the page reformat. I've now resized my website to about 320 pixels wide, and all of the elements have oriented themselves in a vertical. This is called responsive or adaptive design. And in this example, even the default template uses responsive design. We think that this is a really great way for you to prepare your application for mobile. Here's an example with my blog at multiple breakpoints. On the right we see desktop and as the site gets smaller, tablet and then mobile. All using CSS, using the CSS tools that you know how to use and the tools that are built into Visual Studio. Here's an example in Visual Studio of CSS3 support using a snippet where I type at media and hit tab and that complicated media query gets created for me. It's really easy and it uses all of the CSS3 tools that Visual Studio supports. But I could also target mobile directly. This means changing the server and returning different HTML. Here I'll show you an example of jQuery Mobile. I'll go back into Visual Studio, say File New Project, and this time I'll make a mobile application. I'll hit OK, and we're adding jQuery Mobile to the application. We're shipping jQuery, jQuery UI, and jQuery Mobile with Visual Studio now. If I run my application in a desktop browser, 
you'll notice that our site looks like a mobile application. That's because the markup we're returning, the CSS3, the HTML, is all focused on targeting a mobile browser. I'm going to close this desktop browser, and in Visual Studio, I'm going to switch to the iPhone simulator from the Electric Plum Company, one of our partners. I've integrated it with Visual Studio. Now when I run my application, it's going to come up in a simulation of an iPhone. Now this looks nice. This is a complete mobile application built with a default template that has navigation using jQuery Mobile. It looks like a mobile site, feels like a mobile site, navigates like a mobile site. So you can do nothing. You can modify your CSS or you can make entirely new markup. It's totally up to you the approach that you choose. Some applications can be modified easily, made to flow vertically. Other applications are mobile specific and should use a mobile template. Visual Studio and ASP.NET MVC give you the choice to do any of these. You can learn more about this at www.asp.net mobile. Thank you.